Good morning and welcome to day three of the belief study. Today we are going to go over Exodus 4, 8. All right, the, um, the verse reads this way. Then the Lord said, if they don't believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. You know, sometimes I just want to shake the Israelites. They have been rescued from slavery, yet they still don't trust Moses or God. Urgh. I will give them the benefit of the doubt here. This was at the very beginning when he first said, Hey, God sent me to get you out of this slavery mess. So here we are at the beginning of chapter 3 where Moses has his first encounter with God in the burning bush. In chapter 3, verse 11, Moses asked the million-dollar question, Who am I? Who am I to do this enormous feat? Have you ever asked God, Who am I to do what you're asking me to do? <clears throat> oh, I, have, I sure have. Two years ago, when God placed it on my heart, and mind to start a women's class on Wednesday night, I sure did ask, who am I to do this, Lord? I was nobody. I am nobody. It's garbage day today. My dogs are gonna bark because the garbage man's outside. <laughs> um, so I know, I know how Moses felt. Not that I've led a whole nation out of slavery or anything, no, but I, like Moses, felt God's command and, and started a class. Is God talking to you right now? Not everybody has to be a leader of a group. Mm -mm. No, God needs foot soldiers too. God needs everybody from janitors to executives. No job for God is insignificant. Mm-mm. God could have called me to clean toilets. I'm so glad he didn't know. I hate cleaning toilets. Uh, and that job is just as important as the preachers. Don't ever let anybody tell you differently. Mm -mm. Okay, back to Moses. So, Moses had many questions. What if I say you sent me and they want to know your name? Can you just hear Moses? But what if they ask this? But what if they ask that? What if they ask that? Then God tells him in chapter 3, verse 18, the elders will believe you, and then y'all have to go to the king of Egypt. You know, they had the word y'all back in Hebrew time. Ugh. The king of Egypt, Moses thinks, you mean Pharaoh? You mean the guy that just raised me? God says, don't worry. I got your back, dude. No problem. Praise God. He still has our backs. God will never leave us high and dry. He may knock your feet out from underneath you if we're doing something that he doesn't want us to do. But he will always have our back. Then we get to chapter 4. Moses with more questions here. What if they, the Israelites, don't believe me? What if they don't listen to me? I can tell you this YouTube channel is a huge step of faith. But so are the classes at church that I started. My first class, my very first class had two people in it, me and one other lady. That class started in March of 2016. Today, that same class has anywhere from 15 to 20 every week. That is a good sized class for a Wednesday night. Most people are busy with work and don't take time out to go to church on Wednesday night. So 15 or 20 women in just one class, and we have many classes over our whole campus. We have lots of people that come uh, on Wednesday night. 
So, but 15 or 20 women in one class on a Wednesday night to learn about God in the middle of the work week is incredible. And I praise God that he has built my, grown my class like that. So I had these same questions, y'all. What if they don't believe me? What if they don't listen to me? And again, God said, trust me, child, trust me. And here is what God said to Moses. See, God knew the era. He knew these people are not just going to take Moses' word. Moses need visuals, needed visuals. So he said, throw down your staff, Moses. So Moses did, and it turned into a snake. Then God said, pick it up by the tail. Moses did it, and it turned back into a staff. I don't know if I could pick it up by the tail. I don't like snakes. <laughs> I would be like, oh, are you sure, Jesus? I don't know about this. But Moses did it. He had faith. And then God said, this, this is how they will believe you. They will know that only God in heaven can make a staff a snake and a snake a staff. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Then God gave Moses some, some more visuals. He said, Put your hand in your cloak and then take it out. When Moses took his hand out, it was leprous. God said, put it back in and take it out. And that time, it was back to normal. God said in verse 8, this is our original verse, Moses, show them these things. If they don't believe the snake staff, they will believe the leprous hand. We could go on and on with Moses' questions, but we will park it right here on our verse, Exodus 4, 8. We all have the questions. We all think, this isn't good enough for God. And God is like, let me give you the visual. The visual may be starting a class, turning your life around, getting saved, showing not only that God is in you, but also that God is on you, like your whole presence um, just exudes God. That is my goal for anybody that I touch and my life. I want everybody to see God on me and through me and every bit of me is God. Nothing is more thrilling to me than to watch an addict get their life back together. If you sit and watch the process, it is absolutely amazing. Another thing that is awesome to watch is a new believer that is on fire for the Lord or an old believer on fire for the Lord. I don't like the word old, so let's just say more mature in their walk with God, but they are on fire for the Lord. I can tell you, I was, am one of those people. More mature in my walk that is now on fire for God. I have been saved since I was five years old. I have gone through life knowing that I am saved and I will be going to heaven. Just recently, I have left the urgency, or I have felt the urgency to share Christ with everybody. I want all to go to heaven with me, hence the YouTube channel. God has had this on my heart for a while, yet I kept putting it off thinking nobody will watch me. I am nobody. Remember our verse, Exodus 4, 8, God gave Moses the visuals he needed to get the attention of the Israelites. I am praying that this YouTube channel is the visual people need to come to Christ. I may never know if this has an impact, but I will keep doing what God leads me to do because He knows what He has planned for my life. Do you feel God's calling? Do you feel it? It's time for you to get your life on track. 
the way God wants, not the way you want? Have you ever just been going about life all willy-nilly, like doing whatever you want, not considering what God wants for you? Well, now's the time. Say the sinner's prayer with me right here. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I know I need to turn my life around. Lord, I ask you to please come into my heart and save me from my sins. Help me become on fire for you, Lord. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you a Christian already and have been seeing signs like visuals from God on about on the path that he wants you to take about the role he wants you to take in helping people bring people to Christ be it toilet cleaners decorators of the church money counters nursery workers teachers all jobs are critical jobs. If you have had this calling, act on it. Those of you that said the prayer, please message me. I want to pray specifically for you. I'm always amazed, always amazed, always amazed at the words God gives me to say. Little did I know that Exodus 4:8 would have this much meaning, but all I can say is it's all God. Thank you, Lord, and thank you, all of you who have been, who have lasted this long with me, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.